golden sand and blue water on Mars. Yep, you heard that right. There could be a beach on Mars. China's Zhurong rover may have just stumbled upon an ancient Martian coastline. But how is this possible? Could it really be true? And what does it tell us about the potential for water and maybe even life on the red planet? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. Before we get packing for a vacation on Mars, Let's unpack this incredible discovery. It's believed that at one point in Mars's early geological history, nearly a third of its surface was submerged by an ocean of liquid water. This primordial ocean, called Oceanus Borealis, would have engulfed the northern lowlands of Mars, as they're significantly lower in elevation than the highlands in the south. Mars orbiters have captured images of extensive um, valley networks and delta formations, indicating past river systems and bodies of water. And rovers like Curiosity have found sedimentary rocks and clay minerals, both formed through prolonged water interactions. These geological fingerprints, coupled with topographical data from atmospheric clues, paint a compelling picture. A warmer, wetter Mars. The evidence is resounding. We know that Mars once had a much thicker atmosphere and liquid water on its surface. It was completely different from the cold, dry planet that we know of today. But how long ago was this? And the even bigger question, where did all that water go? Did it just evaporate off into space or is it locked beneath the surface? In 2021, the Chinese space agency's Martian rover Zhurong landed in Utopia Planitia. It's a vast plain in the northern hemisphere of Mars. And it went there for this exact reason, to find evidence for whether or not an ancient ocean actually existed on the northern part of Mars. So when it landed, it landed just off Jezero Crater. And that's where NASA's Perseverance also landed just a few months beforehand. And Perseverance discovered an ancient river delta and lake within Jezero, raising the possibility of preserved signs of ancient life. Now, Zhurong's mission was designed to complement these findings, providing a broader understanding of Mars's watery past. Now, unfortunately, the Zhurong rover went into hibernation mode just before a year of it landing on Mars, and this was in preparation for this massive sandstorm, it just engulfed a huge part of Mars. And when it was finally safe to come out, Zhurong just didn't wake up. There was no response signal at all whatsoever. It's highly likely that the dust from the dust storm settled on top of Zhurong's solar panels, and this would have led to insufficient energy to restart the solar-powered rover. But despite this setback, Zhurong collected a wealth of data during its operational year. One of the instruments on Zhurong rover is the Mars Rover Penetrating Radar, ROPA for short. It's a ground penetrating radar that basically uses radar waves to probe underground. You'll often see them used in the oil and gas industry to locate buried pipelines, but also to make maps of the subsurface geology and identify potential drilling locations. On Mars, the radar emits pulses into the ground, and when these pulses encounter changes in the subsurface materials, like for example different layers of rock, soil, or ice, then they get reflected back to the rover at different rates. By analyzing the timing and the strength of these reflected signals, we can then create an image of the subsurface structure meters and meters down below. The ground penetrating radar measures the time it takes for a radar pulse to travel down to the reflector, but also to bounce back and return to the surface. So the depth of the reflector can be calculated using the travel time t and the wave speed v. And then of course you divide this by two because you're bouncing back. Strong reflections could indicate dense layers of rock or sediment, and then the weaker reflections could suggest looser materials such as sand or dust. 
So with this, we can infer things like the density, the composition, and also the changes in the radar signal can indicate presence of different grain sizes. So what the size of those individual materials are made of within the subsurface material. So over a stretch of more than 1.3 kilometers, Jurong's ROPA instrument picked up 76 distinct subsurface layers or reflectors that bounce back radar signals. These reflectors sit between 10 and 35 meters below the surface. And here's the really interesting part. They all tilt or dip in the same direction. They tip towards Mars's northern lowlands. The uniform tilt is a big clue that these layers were laid down by natural processes, most likely by wind or water over long periods of time. And even more intriguing, their orientation supports the idea that a massive body of water, possibly that theorized Oceanus Borealis, once covered the northern lowlands. The way that the sediment appears to have been carried from the higher southern regions down to the lower northern ones is exactly what you'd expect if a large body of water had once filled that area. In fact, the potential coastline detected stretches of at least 1.3 kilometers in length. And the angles of these dips, ranging from six to 20 degrees, are strikingly similar to the slopes of Earth's coastal regions. Now also, we know that the speed at which the radar pulses move through the ground will depend on the permittivity of the materials below, a measure of how much a material resists forming an electric field. The average relative permittivity of 4.4 found here matched up really well with fine to medium grain sand deposits with a small mix of pebbles too. And this further supports the idea that these are sedimentary layers. And in addition to the slopes, they also found structures similar to beach ridges. Now, if we compare this to similar formations on the Earth, the thickness, the deposition rates of about 10 to 40 centimeters per thousand years of these layers, that suggests that Mars's warm and wet period lasted for tens of millions of years. This wasn't just a small brief period of liquid water. It was a stable long-term environment allowing enough time for significant sediment to build up and accumulate. Now, this has big implications for the possibility of past life, a planet with water for millions of years. Well, that's exactly the kind of place where life could have had the chance to not only emerge, but also to evolve. Coastlines on Earth are incredibly rich in biodiversity. You get the mixing of the fresh and salt water and the abundance of sunlight and the availability of essential minerals, this creates the perfect recipe for life to thrive. It's really not unreasonable to imagine that similar conditions on ancient Mars could have fostered life, and that we might find evidence of past microbial life or even fossilized remains preserved in these sediments. Now, if this is really a coastline, it would have formed billions of years ago when Mars was much warmer and much wetter. But when exactly that is, we still don't know. So future missions will still be needed to confirm these findings and to search for more evidence of past water and potentially life. But thankfully, Perseverance rover is still operational. It's working right around the corner and coincidentally, it's also equipped with the ground penetrating radar. So maybe it can make that detour. But anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe. Hey space cats, fly with me to the stars Faster than light, soaring past Mars Unveiled